Welcome to Face to Face, and today we're going to talk about photography, we're going to talk about uh, Germany and the camp, we're going to talk about women, and uh, uh, welcome to Face to Face, Christina. Um, this, you are a photographer, and can you explain a little bit how did you end up um, being a photographer, and then we will go more deeply into your work and uh, uh, your project. Yes, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, for inviting me. Um, I think I have a special relationship with photography ever since my childhood, because there were a lot of photographs in my home, and many, I would say, to make it short, many missing pieces in my family history were to be found in pictures. So for me, it was a way to reconnect and to explore uh, the invisible. And so naturally, I wanted to grab a camera myself and try to tell stories um, in a visual way, which I think it can be universal because you don't need translation. Of course, text is a compliment, but it can, an image speaks to anyone. So talking about your family, you, um, you were uh, very touched by uh, uh, the story of your ancestor and uh, the Germany camp situation. So can you... Uh, Tell us more about the Wolfgang, and then we will also uh, show uh, the photos so you can uh, describe what, what's happening. Yes, yeah, so um, my grandfather, um, whom I never met, uh, my mother's father, uh, was, uh, was a prisoner of war under Nazi Germany. And it was a very traumatic experience for the whole family. And he was chosen to to be the commander of the Italian internees. And um, I think what is important to say about this story is that these men chose to stay there because they could have vowed allegiance to Hitler and they would have been granted more or less freedom or a bigger freedom. But So they stayed there for 18 months in pretty gruesome conditions because they thought uh, it was inconceivable to betray their homeland and to become Nazis. So I think it's uh, a beautiful story. Um, so just to, to comment on the images, these are the original, I think, present sheets or something like that from my grandfather, which my grandmother gave to me because my, my mother's brother asked me, gave me this book that my grandfather has written and asked me to tell this story so that it would not be forgotten. And so I, I hesitated a little bit, then I got on a plane, then I rented a car and I tried to find this tiny, tiny village. And I was surprised because it was a nice village, uh, very cold, very humid. Uh, it was February and I really felt that the conditions were very, very hot. And so I went looking for the camp, and this is not the camp, this is the, uh, the whereabouts of the camp, because I couldn't find it. So I kept looking for a long time, and I found a cemetery where a lot of Russian, like 15,000 Russian were, were buried mm -hmm. from the previous war, and they were in even worse conditions. And this is the tiny village of Witzendorf, which looks pretty nice, a, a bit ominous, and um, there were almost nobody. So in a way, it was like traveling in the past, which was, um, and this is the camp. This is, I found after two days of scrambling to, to put together pieces that this is the perimeter of the camp. So this is where my grandfather and several thousand men stayed for 18 months so it was a very touching moment for me and this is the um, this is the train station from which they arrived and they left so i also felt like i met him in a way there because they must have passed from this point when they arrived and when they left and nobody is there it's like a you know a ghost city it was very cold but still this is still the the train station. I think it's abandoned because looking inside, so I took some pictures, of a few details, and it looked abandoned to me. And it was 
pretty amazing and still to to be able to document such a a pivotal you know place because this is where they came by train and um i wanted to 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 portray a bridge between the past and the present because it's important that this story this kind of stories stays alive this is what interested to me like when you look at the pictures you imagine that the door is going to open and somebody is going to come outside i think this is the power of images and um this is me <laughs> in <laughs> in my room at night and it's very cold outside i just wanted to give a sense of the very harsh conditions because it's northern hemisphere it's not a, a an easy climate and it didn't have any heating so gives you a sense of what it took to choose to stay there for 18 months and um this is an original document as like an ID card from his detention. And I brought it there symbolically to say that there was some kind of reconnection with the present. And also I had brought candles and flowers and I just wanted to have a moment to do a tiny kind of ceremony for him who went home, but several others didn't and because the this is the the only trace that's left of the camp which of course is a bit erased and it was sad to imagine that many people have died there and nobody has ever had a, a thought for them so i try to make this moment uh, a bit special and um, i wanted to take this picture because there are um men beneath and men who have walked upon this earth and we walk upon this earth and so for me it was a way of connecting the past and the present and the last picture will be in color and shows that it's snowing and it's the present so it's definitely the bridge into the present when i get out of this journey and back into my life and i I feel like I I met my grandfather there and um, and I can bring him home with me in a way and I can embody um, some of his values hopefully and reconstruct a link that was missing in my family history because of this trauma. Wow. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. It was very really beautiful. Um, now you you use these very powerful tools of, of photos uh, very well, and and you, you wanted to also work on a uh, a project concerning women, and and so it's it's a mix of women and men. Or how did you um, how did you connect with that uh, uh, notion and? Um, and really, yeah, um, yeah, um, what, what is your main goal? Yes, um, the idea for this project is that I realized that when I looked at many websites and magazines, I didn't see the people um, that, as I saw them in real life, I mean, I'm, I didn't see people that um, looked true to me. So I... I wanted to give it a try and try to portray my vision of the beauty and the diversity of people. So, and I wanted to call it we men because it's women and men. So trying to play with the two words, um, bringing together men and women. So these people don't know each other. They are strangers. They are not models. They are normal people like you and me, whom I recruited or that came to me through internet, through social media. And the, the idea is just that they would choose a place that it was dear to them or inspire them and that would come with an object, with something special that they wanted to be included in their story, just to, for the pleasure of sharing their 
their universe, who they are, how they are. I mean, the pictures are not um, a very natural and there is no Photoshop. And I wanted to create a gallery of different people, different ages, backgrounds. I wish I would have had even more, <laughs> but 2020 stopped me <laughs> with the pandemic. Yeah, that was difficult. Yes. That was a difficult uh, uh, period for Yes, for especially for strangers, mm -hmm. you know, to connect with somebody they don't know. Um, well, was difficult. So maybe I will pick it up again in the future. And so the idea was really to create um, a mosaic of different people who are not used to posing. That is not the idea. The idea is to portray them as they are and to show that humanity is beautiful as it is and um, that what we see is too often um, stereotypes in one way or the other. And so I um i my purpose was to portray different interests different kinds of beauty and young less young you know women men all together and to give a sense that we can all be together as different as we are and this is what makes life beautiful and enriching it's this difference that we all have many things to learn from one another because we are different and so this difference is not to be feared is something to be inspired by and this project was a magnificent experience for me because i got to meet many people who trusted me with their story um, and it was very moving for me to see that many people are willing to own the story and to share with other people in uh, as the, as they are. And I hope there can be more images like this because I think I have two children, that especially the young generation, need to see that you don't have to fit in one you know mold. You can be who you are, you have to be who you are, and this is where your beauty lies. So this was my my purpose in doing this project. And now I'm carrying on a little bit on the same idea uh, with another project, which is called Bloom, uh, which is inspired by the, the end of the pandemic. So the idea that after dark time, you know, we can all bloom, we can embody something different and still in nature um all flower all plant or animal are different so this difference this richness is really part of the creation where we live in so i think it is really something to be cherished and inspired by wow. so, so you're sharing a few a few of the portraits i think they are about 50 i don't know 45 and I hope I can resume maybe this year if I have the time, if the pandemic allows us, I will do some more, hopefully. This is so powerful. Hello. What I want to say is that most of the time, since these are people that are not used to be photographed, they are not models, the first thing they say is, oh, I'm not comfortable. Oh, I'm, I'm not beautiful enough or I'm not, I don't know, mm -hmm. strong enough. Mm -hmm. And this gives us the measure of how influenced we are by stereotypes that are passed on uh, from society, family, friends, I don't know, whatever. And then when trust is there, they hopefully mm -hmm. if I do also yeah. my part. There is some sort of, you know, also pleasure in sharing one's life. And I I think that's beautiful. That was enriching for me. And I hope it can inspire people who will see these pictures to be more tolerant. You know, we need that. <laughs> <laughs> the priority number one. Um, and, and so we, to, we reach the end of a... I will interview. Um, any, how do you see the future and on your work? And you want to re retake 
this project um, and other other things coming? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm always engaged. I'm doing this new project, which is called Bloom. Um, I'm working uh, with women and men uh, using photography as a tool for embodying transformation because it provides a visual image. So if you set an intention, you can embody transformation. So I think it's a great tool. And I think the future looks bright because, I mean, it's up to us. And I try to be the change that I want to see. So I try to contribute with that, uh, with my pictures, mm -hmm. in a very modest way. But I try to, to do what I can. And I'm confident. We have to be. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that was your show face to face. And uh, thank you for Christina for her photo and her contribution. And I hope to hear from you very soon. And please keep watching your news on presence.com. Thank you.